Welcome back to NASCAR Race Home. These boys know more about trucks than you will ever need to know, so they will help get you ready for Daytona. Top storyline in your minds as we get ready to go racing. There's so many great stories for the trucks in 2016. You got the young guns going against the veterans again. I'm most excited about the caution clock. I mean, we're going to know when the caution is going to fly if there isn't an accident. Before, there was these debris cautions that were kind of a mystery. Mystery <laughs> solved. We're going to be able to plan our strategy around this caution clock and be more straightforward with how we race these trucks. Now, how can you be more excited about a caution clock when we're going to have a chase in the truck series? A <laughs> Chase, a three-round chase, and I really love the way this chase is going to lay out. We're going to start at New Hampshire on a mile track, then we're going to go to a mile and a half, and then Talladega to end that first round. And then we're going to have half mile, a mile and a half, and a mile in the second round, and it all ends up at Homestead with four guys going for that championship. We've always had such great point battles in the truck series, but we know we're going to have four and let the best man win. Well, we've, we've always had two guys going to Homestead racing for them points. I think the last time that that didn't happen was 2010. We had one guy that won in Phoenix. I had to put that in there. That's why I said that. So yeah. now... A little self-serving. I thought self anyway. But now, So now, we got four guys going to Homestead that can win this championship. And you know what? It's going to change the way these guys race those last few races to get to that point. Well, think, and it's going to make it exciting. Well, think about this. Last year, the young gun, Eric Jones, he was able to beat Matt Crafton. In 2016, we got a couple of guys that don't have a ton of experience in the top level of NASCAR. Christopher Bell is going to race for a championship. This, ch this chase sets up perfectly for him he's got two-thirds of the season to figure out what it's going to take to go race against Matt Crafton and a guy like Johnny Sauter for this championship and then also you got Daniel Hemrick got a year under his belt he gets with a new team though he learns his uh, chemistry with his crew chief they could be tough come championship time I, I think I think we start out the season racing a little bit differently not wait till the end of the season we start out the season racing differently trying to get those wins early Okay, so how does the clock change the complexity of a super speedway race? Because you're hanging around to the finish, so every 20 minutes, Mikey, how do these crew chiefs navigate? I don't think the clock is going to become an overbearing factor in these races. I think it's going to come up occasionally, not that often. When you go to Daytona and Talladega, we're talking 200 miles an hour, nearly side by side. Anything can happen. Those cautions seem to pop up at any time during the course of the race. What I love about it, it's like in college basketball back in the day when they used to just, when the better team held the ball in the corner and, and run time off the clock. If there gets to be a long green flag run, this clock will come out and we'll get stacked up again too wide like we see on TV there. That's what these trucks are so famous for, bumping and banging and racing side by side. We'll get them back together. So the restarts at Daytona are going to be absolutely incredible. It seems like another common thing, you, you gentlemen are all in agreement, it's tougher now to win a championship. We see it in the Sprint Cup Series with the knockout style chase. Matt Crafton's on the show in just a moment. I was talking to him off camera. He said it's going to be a lot more difficult now because you got to be good over the course of 10 weeks. And Talladega, again, decide your fate. Could. Talladega's always the wild card. So yeah. you, you got to come out of there with a good finish like you always did. But it makes a difference of where you're going to line up in that next round. So it makes a difference in your mindset of the driver, what you're doing on the track. Um, you're not going to take some of the chances that you would normally take at a speedway like Talladega. But it makes it so much different for the driver. But the, the crew chiefs, they got to think different in how they, they're, they're strategizing Absolutely. through those races. So it's really different for these truck drivers, guys. And hopefully they paid attention to these cup racers in the last few years to figure it out. For the first time ever now, we can ask our analysts to pick their heavy favorite, the mm. final four that will make it to Homestead in the Camping World Truck Series. Mikey, who are you going with? Uh, these are my guys. I love all four of them. And what I like, what we talked about earlier, the chase sets it up perfectly for Christopher Bell. Very seldom has a guy come along with so much height that Bell has. He's good. He was good in the dirt. We knew that. He was really good on the pavement as well. I think that because of the Chase format, Christopher Bell wins the championship mm. in 2016. Michael, where is Tyler Reddick? He finished yeah. second points last year, <laughs> only 15 points behind Eric Jones. Where was he on your list? You didn't like my four? Well, I liked him, but I liked, <laughs> I liked Tyler Reddick, too. I just think Johnny Sauter is going to be a man possessed. He's got a new team. He's been at Thor yeah. Sport forever. I think he's going to hop over there and really contend with Matt Craft and these kids to win this championship. I like Tyler Reddick. I just couldn't squeeze him into my top four. <laughs> See, you're going to get a lot more of this next week because we are heading to Daytona and can't wait for the trucks to be on track, boys. Thanks so much.